Okay, so today we're looking at the question, do you really need to be taking a protein shake after training sessions? To answer this, we actually really need to look at whether the concept of the post-workout anabolic window is real or not. For those who don't know, the anabolic window is thought to be a short time period, generally 30 to 60 minutes immediately post-training, that if you induce protein, it will ramp up muscle repair and new lean muscle development. If you miss this window, then it's thought you've completely missed out on the opportunity. There's generally two schools of thought when it comes to the anabolic window. Camp one is all for the anabolic window, believing this the most important time for nutrient delivery, and it's only open for a small amount of time immediately after training. Camp two are believers that it's a myth and doesn't exist, generally concluding that camp one is basing everything off bro or old science. The truth of the matter is that the truth actually lies somewhere in between and an interpretation. First of all, thanks to multiple studies that supported post-training protein ingestion, concluding it to be of the utmost importance responsible for the body shift into an anabolic state, naturally the anabolic window was and is still widely accepted. Where the game changed though is when a meta-analysis was conducted over dozens of previous reputable studies. Now, while this meta-analysis recognized that a hypertrophy effect was present from subjects ingesting post-workout protein, it actually concluded that the lean muscle development differences could be simply explained by the fact that the post-workout protein supplementation simply increased total daily protein intake in those test subjects, rather than the specific timing being of any importance which then naturally had a lot concluding that all supporting studies of post-workout protein ingestion had their post-workout protein taking subjects simply on more daily protein than the test subjects not having the post-workout protein. But before you throw your protein shaker out of your gym bag, it's important to understand what happens to our body post-training, in particular in effect to your muscle protein synthesis. Both camps, for and against the anabolic window, agree that when you work out and stress your muscles significantly, you upregulate the process of protein synthesis, which allows your body to combine amino acids into new protein, aka new lean muscle tissue. It's during this time of muscle protein synthesis elevation that protein consumption will have a positive and supporting effect to these already elevated levels. Where the argument comes in is how long are these muscle protein synthesis levels elevated for? And how long do you have to drop protein in to take advantage of the already elevated levels? This particular study showed elevated protein synthesis levels up to 48 hours post-training, meaning protein ingested within that 48 hours would support muscle protein synthesis a fair bit longer than the original 30 to 60 minute anabolic window that used to be the belief. However, the more trained an individual is, the less time these elevated muscle protein synthesis levels are present. Beginners can experience elevated protein synthesis levels up to 48 hours, meaning dropping protein anywhere in this time will have an enhanced effect. While studies have shown that trained athletes elevated muscle protein synthesis is much, much shorter, meaning you have a shorter amount of time to drop protein in to support these elevated muscle protein synthesis levels. How long do you have? Well, I'm still yet to see a study supporting anywhere less than 16 hours of elevated levels. So while much shorter than that 48 hours, it's still much longer than the original 30 to 60 minute window. So I guess the question is, should you be putting the protein powder out of the gym bag, back at the shelf, and throwing the protein shaker in the bottom drawer? In my opinion, most definitely not. What I take into account for all my clients and make sure that they take advantage of is the post-workout muscle protein synthesis spike, which is present whether you're a beginner or not. From the same study, it's evident that zero to three hours after training is the greatest spike in muscle protein synthesis, with a slow decline after that. If you're all about maximizing all effects, then dropping protein in during the spike is still best practice to support your muscle protein synthesis. Whether it's of minimal benefit or not, it's optimal. Do be aware though, waiting two hours after training, then deciding to consume a chicken or steak meal full of protein in theory sounds great and is a solid source of protein. You need to take into account though the digestion speed. 
While you'll still be in an elevated protein synthesis state, you'll miss the spike. While still arguably a minimal difference, still a difference nonetheless. So pick a fast digesting protein source. Now this is where an isolate protein or a whey protein is of most benefit. Now to really take advantage of each post-workout spike, I recommend my clients consuming a whey or isolate protein immediately after training, right at the beginning of that zero to three hour spike. And then one and a half hours later, still in the spike, have them consume a real protein source meal. This is where I have them select a protein source, such as white fish or chicken breast, generally accompanied with a carbohydrate, but minus the fats. While it will take your body longer to digest the second meal within your muscle protein synthesis spike, longer than that first protein shake you first consumed, you still want your body to digest and uptake the nutrients of the second meal as fast as it can, as much as it can, while still in the spike. Having fats in that meal, well that's gonna slow the digestion speed. Remember, while this food timing effect is minimal, in the big scheme of things, it is what's optimal. And performed and followed day after day, month after month, consistently, the small minimal positive effects from taking advantage of the muscle protein synthesis spike will add up over time. In conclusion, while the short lasting 30 60 minute anabolic window is gone, what should be recognized is the upregulated levels of protein synthesis present post training. And yes, while the only way you would completely miss out on taking advantage of these elevated levels is not eating for 16 to 48 hours, which just wouldn't happen, recognize that a muscle protein synthesis spike is very present and it's there to be taken advantage of by those looking at every angle to get the edge and maximize their efforts. Yo, thank you guys. Thank you very much for watching that video. I hope you found it of some use. Um, I, I wanted to, for quite some time, put that topic up because it's an age old debate. And I hope it's something you can take that information and you can now feel confident in knowing what you're doing. Whatever, whatever you choose to practice, just knowing confident behind the science um, or the science behind what you're doing. And yeah, I think that's, that's always important. Guys, next week, I'm gonna take on cardio. So I'm going to put high intensity interval training right up against lists, low intensity, steady state. And we're basically going to see who comes out on top, what's best for fat burning. Um, so yeah, it'll be an interesting one. So guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And also please follow me on my other social media, uh, let me start that again, social media channels, in particular Instagram, because I always get notification on when I'm dropping new content out. So guys, until next week, we out.